today I'm going to play through Pokemon Crystal with Celebi. And this is in celebration of my recent 20k subscriber milestone. I really want to say thanks to everyone who's hit subscribe so far. You're really making my dreams become a reality. Actually so much so that I hit 21k before I actually was able to release this video. So thanks so much. Uh, it's a really humbling experience and I just want to do my best to get the best possible content out there for all of you. Because it's not going to be very hard to beat Pokemon Crystal with Celebi, I'm going to take some Q&A questions throughout this video and answer them so that all of you can get to know me a little bit better. I've been thinking about this a lot recently, and as I'm writing scripts, normally what's happening is I'm kind of masking a little bit, and I'm putting on a bit of a persona, so I think it might be interesting for all of you to just get to know me a little bit better as I answer some of these questions. Let's get into the challenge. Here are the rules for today, I've also left them in the description so that you can reference them later. Let's talk about Celebi's base stats. They're all 100, so it gets basically an even distribution in everything, and with perfect DVs, today it's going to have basically balanced stats. I will be earning stat experience as I go, and that'll make some of these stats grow in an asymmetrical way, so just know that that's the reason. It's not actually the DVs underneath everything. Celebi's move pool is also pretty good, but honestly, it's not great. It gets confusion to start with, and that's great because it gets the same type attack bonus, which is a 1.5 times base power modifier. Uh, but other than that, honestly, it doesn't get access to many good psychic moves. Like, Future Sight is base 80 power, but it doesn't do damage the turn you use it. So that's really frustrating. Ancient Power is kind of a strange pick for Celebi. Like, it's going to be useful throughout the playthrough in a couple moments, but it's not that great because it doesn't get stab. In addition, the rest of the moves are not very good. Like, Giga Drain is probably its best Grass-type move, unless you want to go with Sunny Day and Solar Beam in combination. But Giga Drain is only accessible once you get to Cant and Solar Beam is only accessible before the League, so that's not very good. Outside of that, it gets access to Shadow Ball, Psychic, Mud Slap, so these are some pretty good moves. I do want to note here that I was trying to go quickly with this playthrough, and I kind of got seduced by the combination of Recover and Heal Bell, and so that constrained my moveset for much of this playthrough, so I'm sure a lot of you are just going to be like quite frustrated watching me not remove those moves in favor of other more diverse movesets. Please forgive me. As I normally do at the beginning of these challenges, I set my Pokemon's DVs so that they're the highest possible value, or so I'll get the optimal hidden power. But today I don't think I'll need a specific hidden power typing, so I'm just going to set Celebi so that it has perfect DVs. Now let's get into some Q&A questions as I steamroll the beginning of the game with this mythical Pokemon. In general throughout this video I've grouped the questions so that they're in blocks that are all themed, but there are just some that I'm like not really sure where to put, so I've uh, grouped those all here at the start. So here's the first question. And this one was asked by one of my patrons, Adam, and he asked the question, if I ask this question, will you answer it? And uh, the answer is yes. I also read all the comments on my YouTube videos, and this is getting increasingly hard as I'm getting more viewers. Also, you'll probably get a response if you leave something in the comments that's like, hey, do you actually read these? I'll respond to that because I want to prove that I actually do. But in general, you'll also get a response if you leave something that's generally positive because I like to encourage that sort of interaction on my video. I want to create a really positive community for all of us here so that we can share Pokemon together. The first type of question that I got, which were very common, was the, will you do Pokemon X with this Pokemon at some time in the future? And so here's a bunch of those comments. Uh, Pokemon that are popular in this kind of thing is like Tyranitar, maybe Magikarp, Mankey, actually strangely Mankey. <laughs> I didn't think a lot of people would request that one, but a lot of people have been. For all of those questions, I want to see the answer is yes, if it's in Pokemon Yellow. I intend to play Pokemon Yellow with every single Pokemon, and I've actually introduced a Pokedex at the end of my videos that's going to show all the Pokemon runs that I've done so far in Pokemon Yellow. At some point, I'm going to have a complete Pokedex, a complete challenge dex, if you will. I also intend to do this in Pokemon Crystal, but that's with every single Johto Pokemon. I don't know if I'll get around to completing Pokemon Crystal with every single Kanto Pokemon, but I probably will. After all, I need content for this channel, so yeah, I'll probably get around to it. This question leads us very naturally to the next common question that I get, which is, are you going to do Generation 3? Am I going to play through the Hoenn games? Am I going to play through Leaf Green and Fire Red? So the answer to that question is yes. And then the follow-up question to that is usually, when are you going to do it? Well, it's going to be much sooner than you think. So stay tuned over the next couple weeks, because I think that we're going to start to see some Generation 3 content on this channel. However, I'm very hesitant to promise that just because usually I promise things like the starters video and then I don't deliver on them. So that's another question. When is the starters video coming out? 
So the answer to that one is really soon. It's actually going to come out next week, so after a long delay, I'm finally going to deliver on it. And I guess it's going to be a nice present for everyone over the holidays. The next question is by one of my patrons, Lawrence. They ask, why are you shifting to making not fully evolved Pokemon videos? I really like the fully evolved ones, but the last four were not fully evolved Pokemon. I do like the Pikachu one, but all the others just don't feel natural. I get that it's more challenging, but you were one of the few Poketubers that did fully evolved Pokemon videos, while almost all the big channels only do first stage Pokemon. Don't get me wrong, I still like watching all the videos and appreciate your hard work. I'm just curious why you're taking this new route. Well, the reason put simply is burnout. So let me explain. When I first started making the channel, I thought that people wanted to see challenging videos, because after all, these are Pokemon challenges. I thought that I would play with first stage Pokemon just because that seems more challenging than say playing the game with Pidgeot. It makes more sense to play the game with Pidgey. That's going to be obviously harder because Pidgey's base stats are lower. The way I conceived of it was, well, I'll just play with all the first stage Pokemon and that should be enough. And then I realized that people actually wanted to see me play the game with fully evolved Pokemon like Starmie. It was actually requested a lot. And so then I thought, how can I make a video with Starmie feel interesting? And I thought, well, what if it faces off against another Waterstone Evolution Pokemon? And that was Cloyster. And I was like, what if I just like see which one of these two Pokemon I can beat the game with as like faster, essentially? Because for me, real-time completion means everything. If I sit down on a Sunday to play one of these challenges, how long is it going to take? Is it going to take me four hours or is it going to take me two hours? Which Pokemon is faster? So I thought that that would be really interesting to sort of race the two Pokemon against each other. And so then what I came up with for the channel was that I was going to play all of the first stage Pokemon as solo challenges and all of the final stage Pokemon as versus videos. Now that kind of backed me into a corner because the versus videos take me a really long time to make. The burnout that I've been experiencing is just preventing me currently from making the Versus videos. But now I've got Sean, and he's like a serious wizard with the video editing, and he's helping me out so much that I think that these videos, the Versus videos specifically, are going to be easier to produce in the coming weeks. So you should see more of those coming up very soon. Now, Bayonetta Aran, I'm really sorry if I pronounce any of your names wrong, also for the rest of the video, uh, doing my best. Normally I don't like saying names because I'm like really self-conscious of if I'm going to mess one up. Anyways, Bayonetta Aran says, I have a whole list of questions, but I honestly stumbled upon your channel and just love the playthroughs. I look forward to the notification every week. Well, thanks so much. <laughs> Anyways, keep up the amazing work. I've enjoyed watching you get better and improve. Definitely amazing to watch. Well, thanks again. This is a really feel-good comment for me. <laughs> Anyways, question. Would you try playthroughs of middle stage mons? Now this is an interesting one. It plays directly off of what I was saying before because all the first stage Pokemon I want to use as solos and then all the last stage Pokemon I want to use in versus videos. So like, what about the middle stage Pokemon? Honestly, I'm not really sure. Some of them like Kadabra, Haunter, that can't evolve if you don't have a friend to trade with. I want to use those ones in uh, solo playthrough videos. But some of the other Pokemon though, like Pidgeotto, I'm not really sure what to do with. Like, would it be interesting to see a video of just like a Pidgeotto playthrough? Maybe it starts as Pidgey and then evolves and then like that's it for the rest of the playthrough. I don't evolve it into Pidgeot. What I've kind of been thinking of doing is just assuming that I've like used those Pokemon in playthroughs and adding them to the decks when I've finished playing through the game uh, with like uh, Pidgeot, for example. Because with that evolutionary line, I'm going to start with Pidgey and then I'm going to evolve into Pidgeot throughout the playthrough. So if I do that and I evolve throughout the playthrough, then I'm going to just check off the middle stage evolution for that particular evolutionary line. Other ones like maybe Polyrath, because I'm going to start with Polyrath fully evolved. I'm not sure exactly how to manage. Anyways, I'm curious about all of your thoughts on this and what would be the best approach. So leave a comment down below and I will, of course, read it because I got to read them all. Sawyer Belinsky asks, what is the versus matchup you're most excited to make? Honestly, right now, I'm most excited to make a three-way versus between the Evolutions, so Jolteon, Flareon, and Vaporeon. That one, I think, is going to be really fun. But again, it's going to take so much work. Uh... <laughs> So I'm like, I'm kind of dreading making it, but I'm also really excited to make it. So you should probably see that one sometime in like the first three months of the new year. All right, so I've arrived at Faulkner with my Celebi and I'm level 14. I use Confusion on the first Pidgey and it faints right away, leading to his ace Pidgeotto. I use Confusion and it takes it down to around one quarter health. It uses Gust and even with super effective damage, I only lose seven hit points. I finish it off with Confusion the next turn, and that's probably one of the easiest Faulkners I've done in a long time. So that felt really good. 
Anyways, no mud slaps today, and I'm moving on. Because I've been giving fairly wordy answers for all these questions, I'm going to answer the next few in like rapid fire succession. So here we go. Would you ever do Nido King vs. Nido Queen? Yes, I will. Very soon, actually, so stay tuned. What do you think is your best video? Also, I want to suggest a three way video between all the Hitmons. So, yeah, I will do a three way video versus all the Hitmons in uh, Generation 2, probably Pokemon Crystal. And what do I think is my best video? Honestly, this question's kind of funny because usually the videos that I think are really good, everyone else hates. So, like, I thought my Meowth video and my Voltor video were really good, as well as my Grimer video. I was like super excited to release all of those. And then I got like a lot of dislikes and people were like really negative in the comments. I was just like, oh, I clearly don't understand what people want. So, uh, probably my fossils video is my best video. It has the most views. Uh, it felt really fun to make that one too, so I think that that's probably my favorite. Do you do any Let's Plays? Not right now, but I hope to do some in the future, so stay tuned. Would you ever consider branching off of the mainline series Pokemon games, doing spin-offs or other series? This question also has another question that's commonly asked that's related to it, which is, will I ever play ROM hacks? So no plans for spin-offs or ROM hacks at the moment, but in the future, who knows? I, I could see myself changing my direction there. Do you think you'll ever do any more Nuzlocks? I definitely will. I'm really excited to do more Nuzlocks. I just don't have time right now. The last one I did was so much fun. Uh, like unbelievably so much fun and actually I bought a new microphone which I'm using right now and one of the main reasons I wanted to buy the new microphone was so that I could catch my live reactions while I was playing the Nuzlocke because I think that that would be really fun to show off. The last questions from this segment are if the Pokemon from future games were usable in generation one on an emulator which ones would you be most excited to use for a playthrough and how did I name my channel? So I'd probably be most excited to use the bugs from later generations like Glycopod or like Scoliopede or something like that. I really like those designs and I wish I could use them in generation one. How did I name my channel? Well, my name is Scott. I thought I was gonna make top 10 videos because I made this channel back in 2016. It's like, I'll make top 10 videos and share my thoughts about Pokemon. So I was like, Scott's thoughts. And then I had never made any videos for like five years. And then finally when I made videos, yeah. It wasn't Scott's thoughts, it was like Scott's challenges. Bugsy's next. He sends out Metapod first and I use Confusion and it knocks it out in a single hit. Okay, that's good. Scyther comes out and I use Confusion on it. It does around 40% damage and then it starts to set up Fury Cutter, which is super effective and doing four times damage in this case because of my Psychic Grass typing. So I really need to knock this thing out quickly. I use Confusion, it does another 40% damage, and then Fury Cutter hits me, taking me down to 32 hit points. Okay, well, I'm gonna finish it off this turn. I knock it out, and I learn Ancient Power, and then Kakuna comes out. I use Confusion, it's super effective, and the bug faints. So, that wasn't very hard. We're moving on to the rival fight. And honestly here, just because I learned Ancient Power in time, he is really simple. I can simply use Confusion on the Ghastly and knock it out. After that, Ancient Power is going to be great against his Quilava as well as his Zubat, so I'm moving on. In this next segment of the video, I'm going to answer questions which are specifically related to Pokemon. So things like, who is your favorite Pokemon? Before I've said on this channel that Butterfree is my favorite Pokemon because I used it to beat Pokemon Yellow as a kid, it was basically the only thing that allowed me to get past Brock. And as we'll know uh, after making my recent Pikachu video, Brock is not very fun to defeat, uh, especially if you have the electric mouse as your starter. So Butterfree earned its place in my heart just because of that, and it was kind of there ever since. But recently, a contender has arisen that I think is probably my favorite Pokemon now. However, I have a video planned for that Pokemon, and I don't really want to reveal who it is yet. So I'm sure a lot of people will make guesses in the comments. And yeah, if you've been paying attention to this channel, I think you'll know who it is. In contrast to that, Jay Scrag asks the question, which Pokemon do you dislike the most? I would have said Voltorb, but honestly, the new form that came out for it, I kind of like. I think it's kind of cute. Anyways, uh, maybe not Voltorb. So if I had to choose another Pokemon that I honestly like really dislike, probably Stunfisk. This thing is like so ugly and I was so upset when it got a new form. I was just like, why did another Pokemon not get a new form? Like it would have been cool to see a new Venomoth form, but instead we got a Stunfisk form. Ugh, this thing is just the worst. <laughs> okay, here's a related question. What's your favorite Pokemon that you won't actually use in a game because of its stats, poor moveset, or other disadvantages? Probably Smeargle. Smeargle is like really cool. I love its design, how it's like an artist that uses its tail to paint things. And I love the idea of Sketch to like steal moves. 
but look at these stats. What are these stats? These stats are so terrible. And in generation two, like it gets access to no TM moves. So I've honestly been putting off making a Smeargle run just because like it's so bad, it's terrible. Tim Mitchell asks, what Pokemon game do you think you logged the most recreational hours into, excluding time spent making videos? Congrats on 20k, your uploads are the highlight of my Sundays. Aw, thanks Tim, I really appreciate it. I think the game I've logged the most recreational hours into would probably be Pokemon Silver. I played that a lot as a kid, but in recent times playing so much Pokemon Yellow for the channel, it's definitely Pokemon Yellow right now. Like over the last year, I have probably played Pokemon Yellow like 60 plus times, at least once a week. Um, sometimes like 12 times a week, because uh, I don't actually release all of my playthroughs. Some of them I just decide like, oh, that's not that interesting. I'm not going to release it. Uh, and other times I think that there's an interesting playthrough. Like I did two Mr. Mime playthroughs and I was testing to see like what would happen if you use rare candies and what would happen if you didn't use rare candies. What would the time difference be? And I was like, I can't make a video with this. It's going to be like a two minute video. Just be like, hey, there's a time difference. Uh, I also spent a ton of time playing Pokemon X. When those games came out, I was like really in love with them, and they actually got me back into Pokemon after I stopped playing in Generation 3. Haunter asks, What are your thoughts on Gen 6 overall? What do you like or dislike about it? I actually really like Generation 6's Pokemon designs. I think all of these designs are excellent, except like these two. Like, ah, these fairies are just so weird and like creepy. I, I really don't like them. Especially like the cry. Uh, Romatisse's cry is just like terrifying. <laughs> In general, I think the thing that I dislike the most about Generation 6 is the fact that I feel like it has no replayability. I really don't want to play these games. I was actually playing through all of the Pokemon games every single generation with my girlfriend, and we were going to complete the Pokedex in every game as well. During this process, when we got to Generation 6, I just like stopped playing and she completed the League and I didn't finish the game. I think another aspect of Gen 6 that I generally dislike is the like roller skates and how the camera work. It's just like the game does not feel good to play. It's just very awkward. I kind of wish we had a free cam like we did in the wild area in Generation 8. Anyways, yeah. So Generation 6 is like, I like the designs a lot, but I really don't like the actual gameplay experience of those games. Now it's time for Whitney. She sends out Clefairy first, and I start with Ancient Power. I'm really looking here for a stat boost before the Miltank comes out. However, the Pink Fairy faints in two hits, and then Miltank comes out, and I don't get my stat boost. I use Ancient Power on the Miltank, and it does around 30% damage, and then it uses Rollout against me, doing only five hit points of damage. Okay, so that's really not that bad. I hit it with another Ancient Power, and another one, depleting all my PP, and I still don't get the stat boost that I was looking for. However, I do enough damage with Confusion on the next turn and I knock the cow out. Which is your least favorite bug Pokemon? Ah, uh, I think I like all the bugs. I think if I was gonna say a bug that I didn't like, maybe Buzzwool. This thing is, uh, hmm, not so sure about this thing. <laughs> oh gosh, who designed this? I don't know, this one's, uh, yeah, this one's weird. This is my least favorite bug, for sure. I like all the other bugs. Venom Gaming asks, what Pokemon do you think is majorly overrated? Okay, so here's a hot take, especially before the video that I'm going to release next week. <laughs> um, I think the Charizard is majorly overrated. Like, it has the new form that it got, it's uh, Dynamax form from Generation 8, and then it also has two Mega Evolutions, and like, it's the favorite Generation 1 starter, and I think that like, the reason that I dislike Charizard so much. I actually like, I actively dislike Charizard. And I think the reason I dislike it is when I was a kid, all of like the kids that were like mean in school were like, yeah, Charizard's the best. I've got like a level 100 Charizard and like I raised it up without rare candies and it's like better than everything that you have. And like those kids were always really annoying. It was just like cringy, like hearing them brag about their Charizards or their Charizard cards. They like, I have six Charizard cards. Haha, <laughs> bet you don't. It's like, oh, these these people were the worst. So <laughs> I think that definitely like biased my opinion on Charizard. So now when I see it, I'm just like, ah, this thing is like mm, not not very good. Also, fire types in Kanto. Yeah, uh, next week we'll see how they do. Marcelo asks, have you been playing the Sinnoh remakes? Did you like them? Yeah, I have been playing them, but honestly, life has been so crazy and the burnout has been so real that I haven't been able to finish them. I actually have only beat two gyms in my Sinnoh playthrough so far. I originally wanted to release a Let's Play of them, but it's just not going to happen just because I don't have the time right now. Honestly, do I like them? 
yeah, I like them, but I don't like them as much as I wanted to. And the reason that I don't like them is like a really annoying thing. So just check out this footage. Like, why do they zoom in and then cut back to the original position? And then the battle starts and like your trainer isn't moving at all. And then it has like a weird animation and it cuts to the other trainer. And just like, there's something very off about all of this visually. And that bothers me like way more than it should. Like it has nothing to do with gameplay. Just this visual stuff is enough to like get me. ENG asks, who do you think is the most underrated, underappreciated Pokemon? Uh, in general, these. So like Trubbish and Clink Clank. Uh, I think these Pokemon are like really cute and I really like them. And I think that like a lot of people like don't appreciate these Pokemon, but I really do. So Viper plays with a Z asks, <laughs> question, what region do you think has the worst level curve apart from Johto? I'd say Generation 6 because of the EXP share. Again, I mentioned that earlier, but it's really annoying and it's really bad. Those games are just not fun to play because there is no challenge at all. I guess you can turn off the EXP share, so I should probably do a playthrough where I do that. Who knows, maybe that'll be my first Let's Play on the channel. Dominico Monaco asks, If you could be a Pokemon game character, what would you like to be? A gym leader, Elite Four member, main protagonist, something like that. And what region would you live in? What Pokemon would you like to have on your party? So... I would specialize as a bug type trainer and I would really want to be an elite four member just because I'd really like to prove to everyone that the bug type is actually an amazing typing. So for Pokemon on my team, I'd probably have a Butterfree and a Venomoth for sure. And then if I had access to Pokemon from every generation, I'd probably have a Golisopod and a Scoliopede, maybe a Volcarona if I was lucky. Anyways, yeah. I've arrived now at the third rival in Burn Tower and this fight is not optional in Pokemon Crystal like it is in Gold and Silver. He opens with Haunter, and I use Confusion on it and knocks it out right away. Okay, this is probably going to be really easy. Quilava's next, I use Ancient Power. It doesn't faint, so it gets to use an Ember, and it actually burns me. That's not very good, but luckily I'm using Confusion, which is a special move. I finish it off the next turn, and that leads to Magnemite. I don't really have a good choice against it. I use Confusion, it's not very effective, but it still does half damage. I thought that would allow me to finish it off the next turn, but then Confusion doesn't quite knock it out, and Magnemite uses Sonic Boom, taking me down to 41 hit points. Okay, so like, this is close. I use Confusion, and I knock it out, and it leads to Zubat. But luckily I've got super effective damage against it, so I finish it off, and with that I'm moving on. Still no resets. Morty's next. He opens with Ghastly. I use Confusion and knocks the first Ghastly out right away, so he's not getting a curse first turn. The Haunter's next, and Confusion also takes it out. Okay, this looks like it's going to be one of the easiest fights. I use Confusion against the Gengar, and it doesn't knock it out. It goes for Hypnosis in Retaliation, but it doesn't affect me. And with that, I knock it out on the next turn with Confusion and move on to the final Haunter. All I've got to do is sweep this thing with confusion, and with that, I'm moving on. Another fight that went the way that I expected with Celebi. This is like a really easy challenge so far. More like a Pokemon easy run instead of a Pokemon challenge run. Dark Magician Girl asks several questions. Here they are. What's your least favorite type? My least favorite type is the fighting type. Humanoid Pokemon are weird, and I don't like them. <laughs> Who is your favorite gym leader? Uh, my favorite gym leader is Sabrina. After all, uh, she's like, uh, got some awesome art. What gym leader, in your opinion, has the best team, and where do you find them in the game? I honestly think that Blue in Pokemon Crystal has the best team. It's well-rounded in terms of type, and a lot of his Pokemon function is great walls against the solo Pokemon that I use in my playthroughs. Sceptile the Hedgehog asks, uh, what playthrough had the most surprises? Um... Probably like my Almanite playthrough, I like was very surprised with how bad the last was. And I was really surprised in that video and o like overall, just like how much better Kabutops was when it gets Sword Stance. Sword Stance is like incredible. Uh, anyways, again, that's playthrough time. Like, yeah. What generation is the worst? Uh, well, I think generation six maybe, but like generation eight gives it a serious run for its money. Uh, I don't like generation eight very much. I played generation eight like two times. I plan to play it on the channel and actually talk about my thoughts about it, but yeah, Generation 8, just like, there was a lot about that generation that just felt really off to me. What's the best remake? Uh, I liked Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. I like the upgrade to the 3D graphics, as well as the fact that in those games they tried to implement a lot of quality of life improvements, as well as push the games forward by making new forms and that sort of thing for the Pokemon. I thought that was really nice. I don't like the fact that the remakes that just came out uh, tried to be like so faithful. Ice cream or cheesecake? Uh, probably cheesecake.
Chalk opens with Primeape. I use Confusion on it and it knocks it out in a single hit. Polyrath is next. I use Confusion, Polyrath survives with around one third health and then uses Hypnosis. Okay, so that's not good. Because I'm a Grass type, it chooses Dynamic Punch next, which is not very effective against my Psychic type anyways, and that confuses me while I'm asleep. So it's gonna be really annoying when I wake up. It misses its next Dynamic Punch and then finally I wake up. I'm confused, but I still move and I use Confusion. <laughs> That, that's good. And the Polyrath faints. So another gym leader that was easy. That's uh, five for five so far. The next section of questions are all going to be about my creative process and my production of these videos. Uh, this is something I really like talking about, but in general, I think that people are less interested in this and just want to see Pokemon challenge videos. However, if you'd like to see videos about my creative process and about how I make these videos, please uh, put that in the comments so that it'll provide me some motivation to make more videos about that. The Notorious JJD asks, Hi Scott, what advice can you offer someone who's wanting to get into streaming and content creation? Specifically, what advice do you have finding time to make content when it feels like you barely have any time at all? And how do you find people to stream and play with? So, in terms of advice for streaming and content creation, like I feel very lucky and grateful that I got this opportunity. Uh, it's really like, it does come down to a lot of luck, but persistence is the number one thing. When you start making content, just don't stop. Uh, if you stop after like four or five videos, cause you're like, oh, no one's watching this. Like that's the biggest mistake you can make. I think I made videos for like six months and each one of them got like 25 views and I had like 50 subscribers and they were all friends and family. Like no one was watching my stuff. And then out of nowhere, people started watching it. The really interesting thing for me was that I was about to stop making videos because I was like about to give up. So just don't give up, just keep going really push through and keep making content even if it seems like no one's watching. Uh, after a certain amount of time, if no one is watching, maybe pivot, try to make a different type of content. Like if no one's watching Pokemon challenge videos, start making Nuzlocks. Or if no one's watching Nuzlocks, start, start making like top 10 videos. And then the next thing is, how do you find time to make content when you barely have any time at all? Uh, I was making the videos at the beginning when I was in grad school and I was also working. So uh, you can find time. Basically what I did to make my videos is I was like, I'm just gonna take something that I'm doing in my life for fun right now and make videos with it. And so what I was doing is I was playing Pokemon Yellow on emulators for fun because I thought that that was fun to do. And then I was like, well, I'll just make some videos with this because it feels fun to make Pokemon videos. So if you can like make videos out of something you're already doing for fun, uh, then it's not gonna feel like you're like stealing time away from something else. And then just do your best to like edit things quickly and, and upload the videos. Doesn't have to be perfect. It really doesn't have to be perfect. Just put it out there. None of my videos are perfect. <laughs> I like never use quick attack when I should. Okay, Randroth asks a question uh, about what software I use to make my videos, also which emulator. So my emulator is one called RetroArch and I use the uh, MGBA core or the Gearboy core, depending on which generation I'm playing. I use Gearboy for generation one and MGBA for generation two. There's some like really arcane reasons for why that's the case, but like, don't worry about it. Just use whatever core you want. And uh, which recording software do I use? I use OBS and I use Premiere Pro to do all my editing. And then this question is a little bit more specific, like what can I do to make a video like yours? Um, honestly, you just got to start making videos and eventually you'll figure out what works and what doesn't work. I try and like give myself the rule of every video, I try and change one thing to make the video better. And usually that ends up being changing 10 things to make the video better. This overall will put up the amount of production time that it takes for each video but the quality improves dramatically and also at a very fast rate. The other piece of advice that I'd have for you is just read all your comments. Like everyone in the comments, you're all amazing. You all give me the best possible feedback. And because of that, every time I get a piece of feedback, I'm able to implement it. Like the fact that I actually play to a timer and I record that timer, that was a viewer suggestion. Like I didn't think that up. I'm Alpine asks, I imagine you took a lot of inspiration from J-Rose, but I was wondering how you decided to take the first step into making content. I always feel I get walled by many things I don't know. Editing, when to record, voiceovers, that sort of thing. How did I overcome this? Uh, honestly, yeah, I was inspired by J-Rose. Like, J-Rose and my dry bread, my two biggest inspirations. They're really awesome. Um, and I have so much respect for them. How did I get over the resting inertia and start making content? Well, I actually gave myself a goal. My goal was to make one video a week for an entire year on YouTube. And that's just because I wanted to learn how to make videos. Like I wasn't trying to become a YouTuber, which I guess I am now. Instead, I was actually just trying to learn how to do video editing because I thought it was going to be a useful skill for me in my career. Um, 
yeah, so I think that the, just set yourself a goal, like every two weeks I will release a video, and then no matter what, release a video then. Like, no matter what, never go back on this. If you decide like, oh, well, this week I won't release, like you're gonna be finished. At least that's how it is for me. If I ever miss a week, I'm like, I'm so scared that I'm just never gonna make videos again because it's really about getting that momentum and keeping it. And so it's, it's all about like, don't worry about if the editing or the video or the voiceover is perfect. Instead, just like, just make the video and like, it's good enough and then release it and then move on to the next one. And that one will be better. Um, so just push forward in that way. Keep releasing stuff, go for consistency. My yoga instructor yesterday actually gave me a really interesting quote, which was like, the water doesn't wear down the rock because of its power. It wears down the rock because of its persistence. And so really like persistence, continuing to release things uh, over time, that's really important. So just like, so set yourself a goal, like one video a week, release regardless of how bad it is, and then just move on. Price is next. He opens with Seal, the water type Pokemon, and it uses Icy Wind for super effective damage, which also lowers my speed. So that's annoying. I knock it out next turn with Confusion and move on to the Dugong. Now this thing's an Ice type, so I can use Ancient Power here for super effective damage. It doesn't knock it out, and then it uses Aurora Beam, which also lowers my attack. Okay, that's really annoying. I use Confusion and I knock it out. Pylosline's last. I use Ancient Power and it only does 25% damage. Ugh, that's not good. And then it uses Blizzard for super effective damage, taking me all the way down to 60 health. Okay, I really don't want to take another one of those hits. So I think I want to play this one safe, and I actually use Recover here to heal. This is the first time that I've done this in this entire playthrough. I can't believe that it took me this long to use this move, and that's probably one of the reasons that I should have deleted it in favor of a more diverse move set. At least I could have gotten rid of Heal Bell instead. The Palaswine's next Blizzard misses, and so I've got a good amount of health when I start attacking with Confusion again. It uses Fury Attack because, of course it does, like, why does this thing have Fury Attack? It's so terrible. After that, Price uses a Hyper Potion, which gives me two Confusions in a row, and with that, Price is defeated. But the one that's coming up next is Jasmine, and she's the hardest gym leader in all of Johto. She opens with Magnemite. I use Confusion, it's not very effective, and then Magnemite paralyzes me with Thunder Wave. Okay, so this is one of the reasons that I wanted to keep Heal Bell around. On the next turn, it uses Supersonic, but it misses, and then I'm fully paralyzed, so I'm not moving this turn. Magnemite uses Supersonic, it confuses me, and I use Heal Bell to heal my paralysis. And then on the next turn, my plan falls apart when I hit myself in confusion, and Magnemite sets up Thunder Wave again. Ugh, that's so annoying. It hits me with Sonic Boom, I snap out of confusion, and I knock it out. Jasmine's Ace Steelix is next. It comes out, uses Iron Tail, I'm fully paralyzed, and with that I'm at around half health. Ah, this is not good. Steelix uses Iron Tail again, it hits me, dealing another 20% damage, and then my confusion connects, dealing 25% damage to the Iron Snake. Steelix uses Screech, and that lowers my defense sharply, and then I'm paralyzed. So this is not going well, I really need to move and I really need to heal. But Steelix on the next turn moves first, hits me with Iron Tail, and I faint. That's my first reset of the entire playthrough, exactly where I expected it to be, at Jasmine. So let's try this again, I think that I can make it past her. In the next fight, the first Magnemite doesn't actually set up Thunder Wave, which is really strange for it. I knock it out and move on to Steelix with no status condition. This allows me to spam Confusion against it and knock it out in fairly short order. Like it does get a Hyper Potion which really slows me down and I have to use Recover to heal, but after that I take it out and I move on to the final Magnemite. With the Iron Snake out of the way though, this fight's just really easy. I finish off the Magnemite and I'm moving on. AnimeFanX11 asks, how long does it take you to write a script? After reading it aloud, do you edit the video clips to align with your words, or is there a different process? I actually have stopped writing scripts. I, I don't know if you've noticed, but in the Clefairy and Eevee videos, I've actually been going off of what I call an outline. So it's like a point form breakdown of all the points that I want to make, and then I just improvise the dialogue. But for a long time, I was writing scripts, and the problem with scripts is they took me forever. Like, forever. It took me like eight hours to write and edit the first draft of the script. And then I would usually edit for like two more hours on the next day. And sometimes this process would be longer if the video was not just a solo playthrough video. So like for a versus video, it was probably like two days of writing, like full days of writing, and then a third day of editing. And then after all that's done, you have to record the voiceover. And so I record the voiceover. I usually would do like three or four takes of every single line. And so like when people are like, your line delivery is bad, I'm like, yeah, but like, I did that line four times. That was the best one. 
<laughs> after all the voiceover is done, I s splice it up. So I cut it up so that it all sounds good. And then after that, I align the video clips to the audio. So that's why you'll notice my like timer in the top left. Sometimes it's faster, sometimes it's slower, that sort of thing, because the video is being stretched or compressed so that it fits with the, with the audio. Originally, I wasn't trying to do that as precisely, but everyone in the comments was like, you need to be like talking about what's on screen right now. And so basically battles, I, I align them move by move essentially so that everything lines up to what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's time consuming. So thank you, Sean, for doing the work for me now. <laughs> Jason Howell asks, is there a specific time of the day you find it easier to play and record your challenges? Yeah, I try to do the most of my work in the morning, actually. So I wake up at 5 a.m. and then by 6 a.m. I start work on the channel. Right now it's uh, 7.30 in the morning. So I like to do all that stuff before the day gets going and people start emailing me and texting me and that sort of thing. Or I get like distracted reading YouTube comments or something like that. ADHD is the worst. Anyways, le less distractions are... Uh, are, are good also uh i guess like medication in the morning like it's like it's at its peak form and it's uh hasn't worn off yet so like if i'm writing a script like i basically wake up and do it right away because writing and reading are really hard for me especially uh when i don't have medication dustin buck asks a really interesting question do you think the versus challenge videos such as golem vs Rhydon, would be better served as a tool assisted speed run to determine which is better under perfect circumstances so this is actually something I've been thinking about. If I can like develop a tool that will allow me to do basically all of the overworld playing and maybe some of the battles, um, basically like with a computer doing it to see what like the optimum result would be. This would actually make production a lot easier for me. Uh, but in general, the way I think of the versus videos right now is that they're more of a like challenge for myself. Which Pokemon can I get a better time with? And it really pushes me to try and optimize each Pokemon because I'm genuinely curious. Like I, I want to see which Pokemon I can outperform myself with. So it's not really about like making my favorite win or something like that. It's more about like me being competitive with myself and that sort of thing. But maybe in the future, uh, if Greg Hart um, can program something like this, we can do like a tool assisted version. And maybe that would be interesting to see like, this is the results I got, and this is the results that the computer got. So like, do my results line up with the computer and in which way are they not aligned with the computer? So I think that it could actually be like an interesting portion of the versus videos uh, in the future if we can program something like that. So yeah, if you have programming skills and you'd be interested in developing something like that, also reach out to me. My email is in the description of all my videos. Okay, here we go. Rapid fire personal questions. So these are ones about who I am. Because yeah, I want uh, I want to like uh, drop the mask a little bit and get to know all of you a little bit better. So a personal question. How old are you? I am 29. I was born in 1992. So yeah, I'm almost 30. It's going to be, uh, yeah, 30 in April. Do you love your cats like Madrivered? I actually don't have a cat, but I have a neighborhood cat that likes to come over and visit me all the time. So yeah, I really love that cat. It's so cute. Uh, her name is Luna, and she's just, like, so sweet. Man, I relate to your content a lot. Thanks for bringing us videos. I have two questions. Do you think that this channel has changed your life and lifestyle? And the second question is, have you considered making the three legendary birds versus video? Yeah, that versus video is going to happen. I'm excited about it. Do I think that the channel has changed my life a lot and my lifestyle? It has changed my life and my lifestyle so much. Like, so much. So much so that I have stopped doing some work uh, that I was previously doing that I really didn't like to do. So basically all of the work that I am choosing to do now in my life is work that I like to do. Uh, yeah, it's been incredibly freeing for me in that way. Uh, it's also made me work harder than I ever have before because throughout the summer I was working seven days a week on the channel because I took time off from work after I finished my, uh, my degree. I had leftover money, so I was like, well, I'll just take time off from work. I was thinking of starting work in September. And uh, yeah, so I worked like seven days a week, like 10 to 14 hours a day on the channel over the summer. And that's probably why things improved so much. So yeah, it's changed my life a lot and mostly for the better. I'm really, really grateful for what the channel has brought me. Thank you everyone for supporting. Thanks to all my patrons. Yeah, everyone, everyone is amazing. You're a great community. What were some of your creative outlets prior to making videos? I'm actually a musician, so I write music and I perform music. So that's, uh, yeah. That's, uh, that's what I used to do. That's my creative stuff. I also like to do visual art just uh, for fun sometimes. And so that's why I've been uh, sketching all of these cool Venomoths. So I sketch them, I do all the line art, and then uh, my illustrator, Serena Vale, she'll uh, take them and color them in and make them look really professional and great. 
What's your daytime job? My daytime job is a musician. I'm self-employed, so I do like a lot of performing, that kind of stuff, arranging, do a whole bunch of stuff. What's your favorite food? My favorite food is pizza, if you couldn't tell from my Apom video. Do I have a girlfriend? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what you're supposed to say. <laughs> ah. This next question is one that I thought was really important, so I want to take a good amount of time to answer it. So here's the question. Sometimes I go through hard times. Do you go through hard times? How do you deal with them? Channeling energy into creativity, such as your videos, probably helps. So yeah, of course I go through hard times. Um, I've actually been going through a really hard time over the last month, and it's largely related to burnout. I think I burnt out somewhere around early September from like making the channel videos. I was just working way too much. And then it's sort of taken me like three months to recognize and go like, oh, I actually need to rest. Like, how do I find time to rest and still make videos? So that's the reason there have been no more versus videos. I was just like, okay, I can't release another versus video. I can't work on them right now. I need to just focus on videos that uh, I can produce a little bit faster. When I go through hard times, I think that like one of the things that I think is super important, and this was my response to the comments, is just like reach out and find support from the people around you, like your family, if, if your family is a support for you, or a community, if community is a support for you. I don't know. There's always places where you can find people who will be there to support you. Talking to other people is super helpful. And I think that sometimes when we're hurting or going through hard times, it's really easy to just like isolate ourselves. But reaching out is usually the thing that helps me the most. Um, and I think, yeah, if you don't have a community or uh, friends, family, that stuff, there's usually free resources to reach out to, like mental health resources. So I recommend those. Um, I'm in Canada, so our mental health resources will be different from your mental health resources if you're in a different place around the world. So yeah, take care of yourselves. It's Mental health is really important. Don't just, uh, don't push it off. Don't isolate yourselves. Uh, yeah, find community. And so I'm really grateful that there's a small community here uh, around Pokemon and that we all get to connect with each other. So yeah, be kind to each other in the comments as well because we're all just people and we go through hard stuff and it's hard to know what is gonna be a trigger for someone and what's gonna make someone else feel really bad. So just, yeah, be gentle. It's, uh, we're all in this together and we can all succeed together. Anderson asks, do you have Instagram? Um, I, my social media presence is awful. I, I'm so bad at social media, like so bad. I have a Twitter for uh, this channel. So I'm at Psychic Flying. And then uh, I also have a Twitch, but I haven't used it yet. Hopefully I'll be streaming soon though, because of my new microphone. It took me this long to figure out an audio setup that I'd be happy with. So yeah. One of my patrons, Bottom Dollar asks, what are your major interests outside of Pokemon? So I've actually really been into the game uh, StarCraft for a long time, so I would say that's probably one of my other major interests. Uh, another major interest, of course, is music. That's what I did uh, my degrees in. Yeah, so I'm a big music nerd. I also have like a strange obsession with awful movies, like specifically bad movies. So I watch a lot of YouTube videos where people just like pull apart really terrible movies. And then every week, uh, my girlfriend and one of our friends, we have like a bad movie night where we just like hang out on Saturday night and watch seriously awful movies. Like we watched the whole Kissing Booth series. I know, like, why did we subject ourselves to that? Like... <laughs> It's just terrible. Anyways, they're really fun. And uh, it's super fun to just like pull apart these kind of movies and just be like, wow, like someone wrote this. Another patron, Pulsar Gaming 911, uh, asks me, how's life going for me outside of YouTube? Life is, uh, it's okay. Again, burnout, it's been tough uh, recently. So like mental health has not been perfect, but I'm doing a lot better now. And I think I'm really like, I'm almost through it. And I think that I'm taking a week off at the end of December here from the channel. And then I think coming back in January, I'm gonna feel like, pretty much completely reinvigorated. So yeah, thanks for asking. Ira Hersey says, everyone else is gonna either ask about Pokemon or your work process, so I'll be the rebel here. And what's your favorite movie? Mm, that's hard. So I just talked about bad movies, but my favorite movie, I'm not entirely sure. I think if you had asked me this maybe like 10 years ago, I would have said The Matrix. I really like sci-fi, sci-fi is awesome. I'm not sure now though. I think I tend to like TV shows more. So the TV show that I really like right now is actually The Expanse. So check it out. It's final season is airing right now. Yeah, The Expanse. It's great. It's on Amazon Prime. Lock Kirby 2 asks, I don't recall you ever talking about any other games other than Pokemon. Are there other games or series that you enjoy? So I really like StarCraft, as I mentioned just prior to this. I played both Brood War and StarCraft 2. 
Uh, other than that, I really, really, really liked Blizzard games, so I played a lot of Diablo 2 as a kid. Like, way too much Diablo 2. I never got into World of Warcraft, but I played Warcraft 3 a lot. Um, I've also really, really, really enjoyed the Halo series, so I actually basically own an Xbox just so that I can play Halo. Um, yeah, those are the game series that I've liked the most throughout my life. In general, I get very obsessed with, like, specific special interests, and so, like, for me, like, I think... Pokemon and StarCraft have been the two game series that I've played the most of, and they, I return to them the most and play them the most. So I'm quite happy just like sitting and playing Pokemon Yellow over and over and over again uh, for like days and days and days. Graham Hedger asks, do you have any pets? Are there any pets you'd like to add to your family in the near future? Uh, you're awesome, Scott. Keep up the great work. Thanks, Graham. Um, pets? I actually don't have any pets, but my girlfriend really wants us to get a cat or a dog. Uh, I grew up without pets, and so, like, cats and dogs around in the house is something I'm not really familiar with, so I have a little bit of resistance to it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, my pets are all Pokemon, <laughs> and they stay in the computer, so <laughs> I also don't have to clean up after them, so that's really good. I like GameStock asks, uh, did you land your girlfriend with smaller PP moves or bigger PP moves? Any tips on how to increase the size of smaller PP moves? Uh, asking for a friend. So I highly recommend uh, PP up. PP up is a great way to increase uh, small PP, but you have to remember that the PP up increases the PP proportional to the PP's original size. So, so I actually like to use moves that have a large PP, but also have a decent base power. So I'm thinking of a move like Slash, because if you get a good critical hit with it, then it does a lot of damage. It does critical hits most of the time, but it also has a lot of PP. So when you use a PP up on it, like it gets even bigger. Uh, it's really, really, really useful, especially for solo playthrough challenges, because then you don't have to heal as much to replenish your PP. So if you need Nurse Joy less to replenish your PP, you can just like run around the whole region, defeat all the trainers with great ease. Claire opens with Dragonair. Now, this fight I don't think is going to be a problem. One of her Dragonairs does no Ice Beam, which is super effective, but other than that, I'm going to be in a good place. At this point in the playthrough, I've learned Return, and this normal move is just so broken in Generation 2. If you've watched any of my other challenges, you know that this is basically the best move. However, today it's just not doing quite enough damage to knock out the Dragonairs in one hit. That allows the first one to paralyze me, the second one uses Ice Beam because they're now at speeding due to the paralysis, the third Dragonair uses Dragon Breath, and it actually gets a critical hit on the first turn, I'm paralyzed, it uses it again, I'm paralyzed again, it uses it a third time, and at this point I finally get Heal Bell off and cure my paralysis. However, this is short-lived because the Dragonair just paralyzes me next turn with Thunder Wave. However, I can repeat this turn order and heal my status condition, and then use Return to deal damage to it. After that, I repeat this again, using Heal Bell to cure my paralysis just before I knock out the Dragonair. Kingdra's last. I use Return on it, it does more than half damage. Kingdra uses Surf, and it's not very effective, dealing almost nothing to Celebi, and then I knock it out the next turn. So, only one reset, and I'm moving on to the League. This feels really good so far. But is the playthrough going to continue being this easy? Let's find out. I grab some rare candies before I head to Victory Road, and I'm picking these up mostly because I think I'm going to need them before Red. It's been the case with most of these solo challenges that I've had to also grind on top of using the rare candies, so skipping them at this time even with Celebi just doesn't seem like a good idea to me. With those picked up, I'm ready to face the final rival in Victory Road, and he's really easy today, and that leads Celebi to the beginning of the league with these stats and this moveset. I'm cautiously optimistic about how this is going to go. I'm worried about specific Pokemon like Lance's Dragonite with Blizzard, as as well as Karen's Houndoom because it has super effective damage with both of its types. How do you think I'll do with Celebi in the league with this learn set? Let's find out. Will's first, and for him I taught Celebi Shadow Ball because I want the super effective damage. It's going to help against all of his psychic types, and honestly it makes this fight really trivial. I'm just able to spam Shadow Ball the entire time and knock out every single one of his Pokemon. With that, I'm moving on to Koga. Against Koga, I start to realize the error of my ways. I taught Shadow Ball in the place of Confusion so that I could have Recover and Heal Bell on my moveset because those moves are pretty flavorful and I like them. However, I really shouldn't have done that, and instead I should have kept Confusion so that I could have managed Koga's Poison types. Yeah, Poison types. This guy's a Poison type trainer and I'm a Grass type. I don't know why I thought it was a good idea to remove Confusion. At Fortress, I start bumping into this problem because I can't knock it out very quickly. Again, a special move would have been better here, and ghost moves in Generation 2 are all physical. This ends with it exploding, and ah, okay, that did a lot of damage, but I'm okay, I'm moving on with 69 hit points. Nice. 
I use Recover, and that allows Muck to set up Acid Armor. After that, I recover again, going to full hit points, and then it uses Toxic badly poisoning me. And now my only choice is to use Return, which isn't great, especially after it's set up Acid Armor. And then Muck uses Sludge Bomb, dealing around 40% damage to me. Ugh, that's really not good. In order to prevent the bad poisoning from getting worse, I use Heal Bell to cure it. However, in retrospect, just having Rest here would be more helpful. I could have healed my health as well as cured the status condition in a single turn, and then used something like Sleep Talk to continue attacking. So obviously, again, Rest and Sleep Talk would have been the better combo here instead of Heal Bell and Recover. Please forgive me for trying to use some moves that seem a little bit more flavorful for once. Just like, Rest, Sleep Talk, Return is just like, yeah, I don't want to use that moveset anymore. After using Recover a few more times, I finally finish the muck off with a Shadow Ball and a Return. That leads to Crobat, the final Pokemon on Koga's team. I use Return, it connects, and then the Crobat sets up Double Team, raising its evasion. I use Return again and cross my fingers, it connects, and knocks the bat out. I'm moving on to Bruno. Here I realize again that deleting Confusion was a mistake. Now, it doesn't make Bruno hard because I'm a Psychic type and like, what's he gonna do against me? He's not gonna do anything, Bruno's bad. Anyways, I knock out all of his Pokemon, but it takes way longer than it would have if I had just had Confusion. Karen's next. She opens with Umbreon, and here I'm stuck using Return. It gets a Sand Attack off, lowering my accuracy, and then my second Return misses, allowing it to get a second Sand Attack in. Ah, uh, that's really painful. My third Return connects and Umbreon faints. Murkrow's next. First turn, my Return misses, and Murkrow gets a Faint Attack in, dealing 20% damage. I use Return again, it misses, and Faint Attack connects again, taking me down to just over half health. I connect with Return this time, and Murkrow faints. Okay, the Pokemon I'm most scared for in the entire league is next. It's Houndoom. It comes out, I connect with Return, and the Houndoom survives with a sliver of health. Oh no, it uses Flamethrower and takes me all the way down to 41 hit points. And then, it burns me. And that's the worst possible event, because both of my attacks are physical moves, and burn cuts your attack stat. Karen heals Houndoom with a max potion next turn, and it's pretty clear at this point that I haven't realized yet that Sleep Talk and Rest would be the better combo, because all I've got is Recover and Heal Bell. So I can't heal both the burn and Recover health in the same turn. This is really bad for me, and it allows the Houndoom to knock me out with a flamethrower. So I have to reset here. Returning to the league, I decide to keep Confusion and instead use Return against Will because I really want to have super effective damage against the following trainers. While I defeat all these trainers again with Confusion, which makes them all much easier, I want to discuss my approach to the Johto League in these videos. Up to this point, I've been requiring myself to play through the entire league in one sweep without saving before each trainer. So this consistent league approach is something that I've actually abandoned in my Kanto videos because for me it just doesn't seem like a good way of testing if the Pokemon is consistently able to get past each trainer. What has felt like a better way to determine consistency within the league is just testing each fight over and over and seeing if I'm able to do it the majority of the number of times, only allowing myself to lose in the case that it's something luck based. However, in Johto there's another complicating factor, and that's the fact that I'm going to proceed on to Kanto and then eventually take on Red. So really Red is the final boss, not the Elite Four. And because of that, I'm rethinking my approach to this league. What can happen is if I fail the league too many times because I'm, say, choosing a bad move set like I was in this case, those repeated losses in the league really stack up and add up to a lot of time. However, in this case, if I was able to save at each le league member, I would be able to try out several different move sets against them in quick succession in terms of real time, and then after that I'd be able to adjust and proceed onwards. This time with Celebi, I likely would have realized at Karen that using Rest and Sleep Talk would have been a much better strategy, and after making that small adjustment, I probably would have been able to proceed on to Lance and defeat him without having the clock stack up as much as it did this time. With this confusion moveset, I actually managed to make it to Karen. However, this time, my league run has also ended at Karen again because of luck. So here's my live reaction. Just check this out. Like, ah, uh, this is so frustrating. I'm going to get a sand attack unless I crit on the first turn. And I don't think I'm going to crit on the first turn. Yeah, so one sand attack but then I didn't miss, so I only got one sand attack this time. Much better than last time. I think that's all I'm gonna, oh, ouch. Crit on the Murkrow, okay, that's bad. Ah, uh, the Houndoom is gonna be brutal now. If that hadn't crit. Uh... Oh no, really, again, a burn? Again. Again, are you serious? 
So now you can see that that little amount of bad luck against Karen really added a lot of playtime to Celebi. And this is something that I was really frustrated with, especially because I wanted Celebi's playtime to be my personal best in Johto so far. However, after losing twice in the league, it's starting to look less and less likely that that's going to be possible, especially with Red's Charizard as one of the Pokemon I still need to defeat. In order to ensure that I'm going to get through the league on my third attempt, I train Celebi up three more levels in Victory Road before attempting it again. At this point, I'm able to sweep through all the trainers and arrive back at Karen with great ease. She opens with Umbreon, I use Return, it doesn't knock it out, and then I get Sand Attack. But this time, my second Return connects and Umbreon faints. Murkrow's next. Return connects and the bird faints, leading to Houndoom. Okay, this is the one that I've been so worried about this entire time. Return connects, it still survives, and then it uses Flamethrower. But this time, it doesn't burn me. Okay, that's all I needed. She uses a max potion, allowing me to get two returns in in a row, and Houndoom faints. I thought that I'd one-shot the Vileplume with Confusion, but I don't, unfortunately, and that gives it a chance to use Stun Spore. But it misses and I take it out the next turn. Gengar's next, I use Confusion, and in one turn I knock the Ghost out. I'm moving on to Lance for the first time. He opens with Gyarados, and I've got to use Return here. That allows it to set up Rain Dance, and honestly I was really excited for this because I thought that he was going to choose Charizard next, but instead he sends out Dragonite. Okay, I guess whatever. I really wish the Charizard had come out and uh, lost all of its power because of the rain. Dragonite uses Thunder Wave, paralyzing me first turn, and then second turn it uses Blizzard. Okay, so that's why he chose it. Luckily it misses, I connect with my second return, and Dragonite faints. Aerodactyl's next. Huh. I guess he just really doesn't want to use Charizard. It uses super effective wing attack, dealing 25% damage to me, and then I use Confusion, which does almost half. Okay, that's pretty good. It uses wing attack again, and my second Confusion fails to knock it out, with Aerodactyl surviving on a sliver of health. It uses wing attack one more time, and then Confusion knocks it out. Charizard's next. I've got 78 hit points for this, so I think I can do it. However, Charizard outspeeds with Flamethrower and knocks me out. Okay, uh, this was my live reaction. Uh, I'm leveling up. After gaining some levels, I come back to Lance, and with my new level, I'm able to two-shot the Aerodactyl, which is really helpful. That allows me to arrive at Charizard with green health. Now I can tank one Flamethrower, and then retaliate with Return, and knock it out in a single hit. Okay, that's exactly what I needed. I'm moving on to Dragonite. I use Rest, and it uses Outrage, and that allows me to use Sleep Talk to hopefully do some more damage, but I use Rest the first turn, oh well. Next turn I use Return, Dragon is confused, it hits itself, and with that I knock it out with my next return once I've woken up. Okay, that's pretty good. The final Dragonite comes out, I use Return first turn, it does more than half damage, and then second turn I outspeed with Return one more time and knock it out. So I'm moving on to Kanto at level 60 with Celebi, but that was 4 league attempts and it really slowed my time down. I was really hoping to complete the game in under 2 hours, but now I'm just aiming for the best time possible. Hopefully something under 2 hours and 30 minutes, I'd really like Celebi to be better than Pokemon like Stantler. All the Kanto gyms are extremely easy for Celebi, here's the footage of those. Yeah, like there's not much to talk about here, I just sweep through everything, and then I arrive at Blue. And as I described in one of my questions from earlier in the video, he's probably the hardest gym leader in the first two generations. He opens with Pidgeot, and I use Return on it. It selects Mirror Move, and ouch Pidgeot, Blue really doesn't love you. My second Return knocks it out, and that leads to Executor. Here I go for Return, it tries Leech Seed, but it misses, and then my second Return knocks it out. Arcanine's next. I use Return, it does over half damage, and Flamethrower connects. But I survive with more than half health remaining. I knock the Doggo out, and Alakazam's next. Return's a physical move, so it takes care of it in one hit. Okay, that's good. Gyarados comes out, I use Return, it sets up Rain Dance, and my second Return knocks it out. Alright, it's time for Rhydon, and at this point I picked up the TM for Psychic, and that allows me to take it out in a single hit. Okay, good. I'm moving on to Red. I always fight him right away without using any rare candies, because I want to find a Pokemon that's eventually going to be able to pull this amazing feat off. All the Pokemon I've used so far haven't been good enough to do this, but maybe Celebi can do it? Let's find out. Red opens with Pikachu. I use Return, I get a critical hit, and I knock it out. Okay, that's really good. Charizard follows. I use Return again, I get a critical hit, but the Charizard hangs on with around one third health remaining. It uses Flamethrower and does massive damage to Celebi. I survive with 75 hit points and use Psychic and knock the Lizard out. 
Espeon's next. I choose return for more than half damage. It sets up Reflect, which is really annoying, and then I have to go for return again, but it doesn't knock it out, allowing it to get in a single Psychic and take me down to 10% health. Yikes. I knock the Espeon out and I'm moving on to Snorlax. I've really got to rest up now. It uses Body Slam and this is doing a lot more damage than I thought it was. Sleep Talk selects return and it isn't doing very much damage at all. Okay, I'm starting to get really worried. Next, Sleep Talk selects Psychic and that does more damage, but then Snorlax sets up Amnesia and that raises its special defense. Okay, this really isn't good, I'm going back to return. What I realized while I was fighting Snorlax is that I'm just not doing enough damage. If I use Psychic and I lower its special defense, that can be nice because over time I'll do more damage, but because the big Sleepy Bear just knows rest, it's always going to be able to heal the damage that I'm able to put out. However, then luck aligns. After using one silly mistake selecting return when I was asleep, I'm able to hit Snorlax several times in a row before it rests and knock it out. So that really shouldn't have happened, but I'm happy that it did. I'm moving on to Venusaur. I use Rest, it takes in Sunlight, and then it hits me with Solar Beam, dealing around 20% damage. It sets up Sunny Day after that, and I use Psychic, but it doesn't quite knock the frog out. That allows it to get in one more Solar Beam before I finally take it down. Blastoise is last, and this is Red's last Pokemon. I use Psychic, it sets up Brain Dance, and then I use Psychic again and that allows Blastoise to connect with Blizzard. Ah, it does so much damage, but Celebi survives with 25 hit points and knocks the turtle out. I did it. At level 68, I defeated Red with Celebi on its first attempt. No rare candies required. So what this means is that I could have used all the rare candies that I collected during the Johto portion of this playthrough before the League to speed up my League attempt. Also, with some move adjustments during the League, I really would have been able to finish this game much faster. So much so that I was overwhelmingly curious how much faster I would be in that circumstance. So, I went back and I tried it again. Right before the League, I've been able to collect 7 rare candies, and that allows me to level Celebi up from level 52 to level 59 before I take my first attempt. I also replaced Recover and Heal Bell with Rest and Sleep Talk, giving me the consistency that I'll need for all the trainers, especially Karen. It's key to note that this lets me skip all of the time that I spent training on wild Pokemon in my previous attempt, so that's a big time savings already. I'm hoping that the extra levels will let me speed past all the League members as well without even a single reset. So let's see how it goes. Will's first, and he's really easy because Return's damage is higher now because of my level. Only Executor and Slowbro survive the first hit, and they both don't have high damage output so I'm not worried about them. Koga's easy because this time I kept Confusion and didn't try the silly Shadow Ball tactics, so I have super effective damage and I can knock out all of his Pokemon. I also 3-shot the Fortress now instead of 4-shot it, and I 1-shot the Crobat. So, that feels nice. Bruno is officially demoted to a hiker again. Ah, uh, yeah, like, why would I talk about this fight? Moving on. Karen is where I start to get concerned. Umbreon survives a hit from return and lowers my accuracy before fainting to my second attack. Murkrow dodges two turns of return, that's so frustrating, and it deals around one third damage with faint attack before it finally goes down. Okay, moment of truth, Houndoom is next. I outspeed and connect with return, and at this higher level it's a one hit. Confusion one hits the following Vileplume and the Gengar, and with that I've made it to the champion on my first attempt. So that feels so much more consistent, as well as so much faster. He opens with Gyarados, who loves Rain Dance, giving me two turns of return for free and allowing me to knock it out. Dragonite follows. Return doesn't one hit it, so Thunder Wave paralyzes me. It's going to use Blizzard next, but it misses and I knock it out. Aerodactyl time. I use Confusion on the first turn, and it does more than half damage, and then I rest to recover my status ailment. I don't want it messing me up against the following Charizard. I finish the Prehistoric Flyer off with Sleep Talk, and the Knot Dragon comes out while I'm still asleep. Sleep Talk luckily selects Return, but Charizard survives, allowing it to use one Flamethrower. But I tank it well, wake up, and finish it off. So, those are the major threats on Lance's team. His final Dragonite does manage to paralyze me, but it misses Hyper Beam, and then I knock it out. It was a fairly lucky fight overall because I dodged Blizzard and Hyper Beam, and Sleep Talk honestly selected the perfect moves when it needed to. In conclusion, by using Rare Candies, I'm able to clock in 26 minutes faster than when I didn't use them. So this is how much time I wasted failing the League attempt after attempt, and not knowing that I could use the Rare Candies at this earlier time. So, now it's time to rush through Kanto as fast as possible. However, then I misclick and I fly to Indigo Plateau instead of Vermilion. Like, Whoops. I did this because it's faster to just fly to Vermilion rather than walking through the city. Oh well. I pick up Psychic and use a PP up on it, and then I stomp Sabrina. Feels good. 
On Nugget Bridge, after completing the rocket plot line, I'm starting to get worried that I'm just not going to make the 2 hour finish line. I really wanted to get a sub 2 hour time. Misty opens with Golduck. Return knocks it out and Lapras is next. I used Return here and I probably should have just used Psychic. The Ice Monster survives and uses Blizzard, dealing a lot of damage, and it freezes Celebi. Oh no, this is really bad. But in Generation 2, there is a chance to thaw. Please, I really don't want to reset. I thaw just in time and finish it off. I use my last return PP on Starmie and finish Quagsire off with Psychic. That was actually a really close fight, but Celebi's victorious. Erica's next and she's really simple, Surge follows, and Double Team and Paralysis could have been scary here, but luckily I knock out all of his Pokemon with ease and I'm moving on. Brock's next and I went into this fight without healing, so I got really worried about my PP when Omastar used Protect. Like, I don't want it to stall me out, but I'm really lucky that I have enough PP to go head to head with his Rock Hard Onyx and knock it out. I should mention here that I'm actually trying to save as much time as possible and I'm only saving in front of gym leaders that I consider as strong. Blaine is one of these, of course, because he's a Fire-type leader, but Psychic's enough to defeat all of his Pokémon. Janine is really easy because her Pokémon are Poison-types, and they're also at really low levels. After that, I teleport back to Viridian City and use my last rare candies before I take on Blue. For this fight, I'm going to play my live narration, so here it is. Okay, here we go. It's Blue time. Return on Pidgeot. Yeah, it's pretty much always going to survive that one, I think. Executor, return. I think I can do it. Yep, it's usually going to use Solar Beam, so it's easy. Obviously, keep spamming the return for Arcanine. Please not a burn. Okay. Whew. But I have Rest and Sleep Talk in that case. So it looks like this is just as consistent as it was before. Going to be no problems here. He's probably going to heal the Gyarados or something. Like, he loves to do that. Nope, not today. It's in two-hit range. And then Psychic for the Rhydon. And that'll be uh, another win. Sweet. Moving on to red. Can I do it? Please, come on. Okay, so blue's out of the way. Let's go. It's time for red. And this honestly feels like a race against the clock. I encounter two final Pokemon in Mount Silver so that I level up to level 71 before the fight. I really want to ensure that I can win. So I've got my fingers crossed. Here's the live audio from my final battle with red. I'm really hoping that I'm going to clock in under two hours. Let's see if I can do it. Here we go, it's red time. All right, please say I can one-shot the Pikachu. Please, please. Ah, uh, okay. That's what I needed. I really needed to avoid charm. It's like the most important thing. Okay, Charizard. Ooh, 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 critical hit. Yikes. Okay, that was extremely bad. Um, okay, so that's not good. Okay, so last time I uh, I crit the Charizard, and that's what let me get by it. And this time, it doesn't seem like that's going to work. Although, I think that Psychic is going to be the better choice here. Because I could lower its special defense, and I'm going to two-hit it anyways. Okay, please not burn. Oh my, another burn? Are you kidding me? Ah, <laughs> uh, Selvi just really likes getting burnt, I guess. Like, um... Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to heal. It has Swift. I'd rather be safe. Not take any burn damage. And then I can sleep talk. Hopefully I'll get a return. Mm, psychic, that's fine. Return, please. Rest, all right. I guess rest is fine. Just delays things. Delaying things is not actually, oh. Delaying things is not actually bad because it's gonna run out the timer on, uh, on reflect. And that's good against the Snorlax that follows. Yeah, so Reflect Faded. Um, I think I'm going to rest here. Oh gosh, the timer. Oh my gosh, I'm so close. Okay, come on, come on, come on, come on. Please let the Snorlax be better than last time. That is not much better. Uh, okay, wake up, wake up. Is that a range? I don't know if that's a range. Oh, uh, okay. But now I'm awake and it's asleep. It's gonna snore. I think it's gonna be able to heal. I'm gonna have to get it into like an awkward spot like it was in last time or crit. Ooh. Okay, I gotta heal. I don't, I think it's gonna heal at that range when it wakes up. No. Okay. So maybe crit? Oh, I'm gonna lose because I'm using rest strats. <laughs> uh, that's painful. Okay. 
or not lose, but I'm going to not get um, two hour time. I just need one crit. And if this fight takes long enough, I'm going to get it eventually. Or maybe I need like three good ranges and then I can take it out. Uh, I don't think so. Yikes. Psychic is much worse. As you can see. One thing is I'm, I'm actually going to be able to stall it out mostly, except for like Body Slam, because the other moves have very little uh, PP. Hey, there is a crit. But now I'm asleep. And I don't have sleep talk. Ah, come on. Okay, so that's the two hour mark. I'm not going to make it. I was really hoping I would. Oh well. Ugh, didn't do it. Uh, is this going to take it out? Sweet, I got it, okay. Um, I'm going to rest against the Venusaur. It's probably going to set up Sunny Day. Uh, or like try a Solar Beam. One Solar Beam, then Sunny Day, something like that. Then a second Solar Beam. Yeah, so it'll... So okay, I, I won't take it out, I don't think. And then it'll Solar Beam, and then I'll knock it out. And then I get to fight Blastoise. And I'm really hoping that Blizzard doesn't get me. Okay, please, 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 please. Please. Wait, which one does more damage? Okay. Doesn't matter. I got him. Okay. Uh, like a minute slower. A minute slower than the time I wanted to get. Mm. Oh well, I did it. At least, uh, at least I got a... I didn't get two hours and one minutes. I got two hours and 53 seconds, so... So that's it. I beat the game with Celebi initially with a time of 2 hours, 25 minutes, and 20 seconds with 2 resets. But after learning how to optimize my rare candies and moveset, I was able to defeat Red with a time of 2 hours and 53 seconds with 2 resets. That's a really big improvement. I'm pretty impressed with that. I think it shows just how much time can be saved by doing a run a second time, or even by retrying a specific leg of the run multiple times in hopes of optimizing your strategy. Once again, thanks to everyone who's subbed to this channel, I'm really happy to hit this milestone, and now I'm on the road to 30k. I'll release another special video like this when I get there. Thanks so much to my patrons as well. You're all making my dreams become a reality. If you want to support the channel, you can sign up at the link below and join our awesome Discord server. Don't forget to like, subscribe, ring the chime echo, and leave a comment because I gotta read them all. If you've made it this far, you're incredible. I'll see you in my next video.